Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the capital asset pricing model, otherwise known as CAPM. What is this all about? This is a model that incorporates risk and shows its relationship to the expected return. It is used to price securities. Basically, CAPM considers that investors need to be compensated for investing their cash by taking into account time value of money and risk. So what are we trying to calculate when we're using CAPM or when we're using capital asset pricing model? Well, CAPM is used to calculate the cost of equity, otherwise known as the cost of ordinary shares. Now, when you're asked to calculate the cost of equity, you'll basically be asked to calculate it in one of two common ways. One is using the CAPM, which we are going to look at just now. And the other is using the dividend growth model or the dividend valuation model. So if you'd like to check that one out, we've done a separate lesson on that one. You can click on the link at the top right of the screen or you'll find the link in the description below. So in this lesson, as we look at this uh, formula or CAPM, we're just going to go through an example of how to calculate it. If you'd like to check out the theory behind each element of that formula, you can click on the links in the description below, which will explain most of those elements in great detail. So in this one here, we're just going to go through the example. And another thing I'd like to mention is CAPM is used to calculate the cost of equity, like I mentioned, and it's only used for the cost of equity. Some students would tend to think that when they say uh, use CAPM to calculate the cost of equity, they think it means you use CAPM to calculate the cost of preference shares as well, the cost of debentures. That is wrong. That is not correct. It's only used for the cost of equity, just like the dividend valuation model is used just for the cost of equity. So is CAPM used only for the cost of equity. And if you'd like to check out how to, do, how to do the weighted average cost of capital, you'll find the link in the description below as well. So what is the formula for CAPM? Here's the formula. KE equals RF plus B open bracket RM minus RF. Well, this can look a bit daunting, but it's quite simple. When you're asked to do the basic calculation, what do these letters stand for? Well, KE stands for the cost of equity. Like I said, we use the CAPM formula to calculate the cost of equity. And that is the first one there. KE is the cost of equity. And RF, what does it stand for? It stands for the risk-free rate, just like F stands for free so it's a risk-free rate of return and what does b stand for it stands for beta so it is the beta factor for the individual security and like i said we're not going to go into great detail of what this means and how it applies here but we're going to show you how to do the calculation for uh, the cost of equity using capm so if you'd like to check them out we've done lessons on the risk-free rate we've done lessons on the beta factor as well so you can click on the links in the description below to check them out and what does RM stand for? RM is the return from the market as a whole. The return from the market as a whole. Now that we know what the formula is, let's take a look at this example. We are told that shares in Shiligo have a beta of 0 0.9. The expected return to the market are 10% and the risk-free rate is 4%. What is the cost of equity for Shiligo? So what's that formula again for CAPM? Let's bring it up. It's KE equals RF plus B open bracket RM minus RF. And we've just looked at what those letters stand for. So KE is the cost of equity. And that's what we're asked to calculate. What is the cost of equity for Shiligo? So what does the cost of, what is the, how do we calculate it? RF is the risk-free rate. And what are we told? The risk-free rate is 4%. So that RF is 4% plus the beta. The beta, what is the beta here? We are told here that the beta is 0.9. So we add 0 0.9 and then you open bracket rm is the return on the market which is a 10 percent here and rf is the risk-free rate again of four percent so let's see how it applies here it's four percent which is the risk-free rate plus 0 0.9 which is the beta open bracket 10 which is the return to the market and you deduct the uh, risk-free rate of four again so obviously you apply Bodmer's rules as you do the calculation, which is going to be uh, 10 minus 4, you get 6 and you multiply that by 0 0.9 and then you finally add it by 4. And you can see here, we put them as digits. We didn't put them as decimals, we put them as whole numbers. And that's what you want to do even when you're punching it into your calculator. Because I find some students would put the formula correctly, but then when it comes to uh, punching it into the calculator, they make a mistake somewhere. But you can see here, we put them all as whole numbers. So what is the cost of equity using CAPM? The cost of equity is 9.4%. If you use a calculator, you should get that same answer, 9.4%.
and that is how simple it is using CAPM. And for most students, they would give you all the information that you require to calculate the cost of equity using CAPM. They will give you the risk free rate, they will give you the beta, and they will give you the uh, return uh, to the market. So that will be very easy for you to calculate the risk, uh, the, the, the cost of equity using CAPM. Let's look at the second example here. This is where many students would ask questions as to how to uh, find the missing, uh, the missing figure. And here we're just going to use mathematics to do that. We are told here that investors expect a rate of return of 8% from ordinary shares in Algol, which have a beta of 1.2. The expected returns to the market are 7%. What will be the expected rate of return from ordinary shares in Shiligo, which have a beta of 1.8? So what is the formula for calculating cap M? Well, there we go. It's the KE equals RF plus B open bracket, the return to the market minus the risk free rate. So what do you notice from this formula here? If you read it carefully, you'll realize that they've given us the expected rate of return for this company, Algol, right? The expected rate of return, which is the cost of equity. So they've given us the cost of equity, which is the answer we usually calculate using cap M. But what are we not given? Well, let's see, we're given the cost of equity here. We're given the beta and we're given the returns to the market. So what are we not given? You can see here, nothing was said about the risk free rate. So we are asked to calculate the cost of equity for Shiligo, but we need the risk free rate. But from the from the first company, Elgol, we are given the information that we can use to get to get what the risk free rate is. So let's plug in those amounts in the formula. A risk free rate is what we don't have, but we have the cost of equity, which is eight percent here. And then, so it's RF, which is the missing figure. So we are solving for X, that is, or which is RF, plus one point two, which is the beta for Elgol. And then open bracket 7, which is the return to the market, minus RF, which is the missing figure. So let's use mathematics to do this. Well, you can see here it's RF and here's 1.2 and here's a number as well, 7. So we're going to multiply 1.2 times 7 and we also multiply 1.2 times RF. So I've already done the calculation here. You should notice RF plus 8.4. How did we get that? Well, it's the 1.2 times 7 minus 1.2 RF. How did we get that? Well, it's the 1.2 times the rf which gives us negative 1.2 rf because it's a positive and a negative so you're multiplying a positive and a negative which gives us a negative now that we have that one there what do you what do you see here well you can see here we have a number 8.4 and we have 8 here so we need to push 8.4 to the other side obviously it becomes a negative and then we will be left with what we have to solve for which is the rf so let's see how that works 8 minus 8.4 why is it minus because we moved 8.4 to the other side and then equals rf which you're trying to solve minus 1.2 rf so what is the answer well it's 8 minus 8.4 equals rf minus 1.2 rf and what do we get 0 0.4 equals 0 0.2 rf and we used this we took rf minus 1.2 rf gives us 0 0.2 rf and 8 minus 8.4 it gives us minus 0 0.4 so you can see it's a negative on both sides now all we need to do is to move the 0 0.2 to the other side so that we leave rf alone and we'll know what the rf is so if we move 1.2 to the other side it will be a division so we'll we'll be taking 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2 so we do that 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2 obviously they are both negatives they will cancel each other out when we divide and it will give us what the rf figure is so what is rf rf equals two and that is what you will usually have to calculate if you are asked to do so now that we know what the rf stands for what the rf is let's now calculate for shiligo we ask what the uh, what the cost of ordinary shares is or what the return from or what the expected rate of return from ordinary shares is for shiligo so what is rf it's two plus the beta what is the beta for shiligo it's 1.8 open bracket what is the rm rm is the return to the market of the market minus the two which we have just calculated which is the risk free rate and when you punch that into the calculator what answer does it give us it gives us 11 percent so the cost of equity for shiligo is 11 percent so sometimes if they ask you to solve for the missing one which is usually the risk free rate that is how you use it using the cap m formula i hope that has made sense 
you are now able to calculate the cost of equity using the cap m formula if you'd like to check out the theory for each element like i said the risk-free rate what it is and uh, where we get it if you have to find it somewhere or if you're doing it in practice what the beta factor is what it stands for and what it means for the company and then what the risk uh, premium is and the risk premium is whatever we have in brackets here you can check out the links in the description below and you should be able to understand cap m in great detail otherwise if this lesson has made sense if you've gained value from this lesson please consider subscribing to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers